Let's start with the day-to-demo. So let's start with the day-to-demo. Okay. So what the day-to-demo is for today is this will be a just small concern, no issues. So what we would be seeing in today's demo is I'll be showing you one of the Hadoop ecosystem. Okay. And that ecosystem is Scoop. Okay. Again, it's like a very small thing which I would be showing, but we would be writing a shell script to automate that. Again, the shell script is not so huge, but again. You'll come to know like how to write the script, how to parameterize it, how to execute it and how to debug it. Okay, that's what we would be taking care of over here. So what I was doing is I went to my virtual machine. I have already opened and I've just connected to Putty. That's what I did. Okay, now what I'll try to do is I'll try to connect various systems which I would be needing over here. Okay, so what are those various systems is First of all, if I just do ls-ltr and I try to go to my local file system and let's say I'm trying to go to, okay, so here only, let's go ls-ltr, okay. So now if you see, there are some particular directories like NiFi, datasets, cc175, jars and scripts, okay. So let me come out of it, okay. And now if you see my present working directory, it's my home directory. So this is the, this is the place where I'll execute my edge node command which is nothing but my Linux related commands and my HDFS command okay I'll open one more terminal let me duplicate this let me enter the credentials okay and in this screen what I would be doing is I would be connecting to my MySQL database okay let me do that <coughs> Okay, and if you see, there are some sh databases. Okay, these are like basic commands which I am writing. Okay, so if you see, there are some database. So for my practice purpose or for my testing purpose, I have created a safe database. Okay, so I'm just using that. I should have done copy paste. Okay, now the database has been changed. I'm just doing some pre activities and getting myself ready. Now if I switch execute a command show tables and there are some tables inside this okay so one is device data and there are four tables okay i'll explain you what is the scenario first we'll try to do manually then we'll try to move into shell scripting part okay first screen i'll be executing my hdfs and linux command second screen just to show you the mysql connection okay and let me open one more terminal And in this terminal, I'll be executing my scoop commands and the shell. First, we'll execute scoop command manually. Okay. And after that, I will try to write a small script and we'll execute this on this terminal. I could have played on one terminal also. But again, it's, it's individual choice and how they are comfortable with playing the environment. Okay. So it's nothing that three different sessions I'm opening. So it's up to us how we play with it. Okay. Now, let me open a paint for just a small demonstration okay now what i am trying to demonstrate over here is is nothing but a hadoop ecosystem that is nothing but a school okay how the name was derived from the sql okay so from the sql sq was something it was taken and from hadoop last like your oop was taken and the name was derived as a school okay so this is nothing but your scoop which is one of the ecosystem okay let me draw this now what this scoop as an ecosystem does is every before coming into spark earlier days when hadoop 1.x was introduced in the market so there were different ecosystem which used to do different work okay similarly this scoop used to do a specific task that is nothing but you are importing the data from your relational database to your HDFS file system. Also doing vice versa. That is exporting the data from your HDFS file system to any of your relational database. So that was the primary work of Scoop. What was the primary work? The primary work was import and export. When we talk about import, so we used to take the data, okay, take data from any rdbms okay and write it to hdfs file system that was the import 
when we talk about the export it was the vice versa of it which means that take data from hdfs okay and write it to any rdbms okay just a small glimpse i'm trying to tell you all so this is not a it's just a small thing which i'm trying to say okay, okay so what scoop used to do it used to do a import and export that was the basic or the main capabilities of a scoop okay now what we are trying to do over here in this scenario first we'll try to do a manual process okay so let me just write those two process which i am trying to do or show over here or demonstrate so the first one is manual okay the second one is we'll try to write a shell script for that okay so let's progress or let's start with the first approach that is nothing but a manual approach now to achieve this what i would be doing is let's take an example let's say this is your mysql database and this is your hdfs file system so what i am trying to do over here let me just enhance the pen size okay and let me write it let's take an example this is your or in spite of that let me write this over here let's say this is your mysql database okay if you see we have already connected to this mysql database and within that we have some tables okay let's say there are four tables how many tables are there let's say there are four tables to name as let's say t1 t2 or let's take exactly device data okay and this is t1 this is t2 and this is t3 now what scoop job is or what scoop does is we need to write some commands okay with those commands what it will do it will try to import the data from my relational databases to hdfs file system what it will do it will try to write the data where in my hdfs file system okay so when it is writing to hdfs file system everything will come into file system which means that there will be directories and under directories there will be files and under files there will be data okay so what exactly is happening the tables are converting into directories okay they are converting into directories and files so what will happen when i am trying to do something manually one by one so let's say first it will come then second it will come then third it will come and then fourth it will come and then my process will stop okay this is what a manual stuff which i am trying to show you as of now okay let's see when how can we write a manual thing and achieve this thing slowly and then we'll try to execute with a shell script okay now let me go to the notepad and let's write the first process which is nothing but a manual process which i am trying to show okay now in this manual process we'll try to write a scoop command now don't worry about this scoop command what are the syntaxes why i am writing this why i am writing that just take the scenario for me is what i need to do is i need to connect to my mysql database i need to connect to this database and i need to pick all the data and what i need to do is i need to go to hdfs dfs hyphen ls and let's say user save ado file system and let's say output okay so this is one of my directory okay because i know this path now if i'm trying to list i don't see anything okay if i just try to see whether my previous command was successful or not i can just execute execute echo dollar question mark if the output is zero which means my previous command was successful okay let's say if i'm just trying to write uh, pwwd okay this command is not correct so if i will not get a zero but i'll try to get other than zero which means my previous command was not successful that's okay cool so let's come back as of now i do not see any directories okay now the scenario which i told i need to import all the data from my mysql database and write it where i need to write it i need to write to my hdfs file system 
okay so it's very simple command just five to six lines we need to write and it will do the work slowly and steady okay let me construct that command scoop okay what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to import what i'm trying to import i'm trying to import all tables i'm trying to write a backslash to go to a new line so that everything will be considered as a single command or else you can write in a single line as well no concerns okay then i need to connect how i would be connecting is i would be connecting to mysql database with a jdbc connection okay so java database connectivity so that is nothing but jdbc to which database i am trying to connect i am trying to connect to mysql database okay I either I need to provide my IP address or I can just simply write localhost because the machine is the Cloudera VM is sorry the Ubuntu VM is running on my local machine okay now the port number is 3306 which is a default of my SQL how do we have like 1521 for Oracle similarly we have 3306 for scoop uh, my SQL okay then after connecting this I am trying to connect to which database that is safe database okay so this syntax will remain entirely constant it will only change few parameters here and there whenever we are trying to do different things okay cool now what I'll try to do is I'll try to write my credentials username is root okay as of now this is these are like hard-coded but we'll try it when, I, when I'm trying to write through a script so we'll try to call this or we'll try to keep this in a config file okay as of now let's do the hard coded method then i'm trying to mention my password okay the password is nothing but welcome at the rate one two three okay i have connected to now there is a concept of scoop okay so when we are importing a single table directory gets created but when we are importing multiple tables like in this scenario multiple tables multiple directories would be created so where i need to store that i need to store in at a certain place so that's the argument which we call as a warehouse directory again there is a concept behind this we need to understand but as of now let's see okay okay cool warehouse directory where i need to write the data i need to write the data at this location correct which is this this location which i was okay so we are trying to write the data at this location which is nothing but user saf hadoop file system and the output i need to give certain directory name okay as of now i'm just trying to give some name because i'll try to come to this scenario okay so th that is nothing but exclude tables as of now with this scoop statement what we will do we'll try to import all the tables okay but with one argument what we'll try to do is from this database and from this under this database there are some tables we'll try to skip some of the tables okay then once we achieve this then we'll try to automate this with a shell script so let's see that okay cool so hyphen warehouse directory now i need to exclude some table okay if i don't do this what will happen all my four tables would be written into my hdfs file system but i don't want to see that scenario okay so that is like a very easy again like this one is also easy but we are trying to do something little different okay so here i am trying to write a exclude parameter so what i am trying to say i am trying to say exclude tables which table i need to exclude okay so let's take an example from this i am just trying to exclude this table so what will happen out of the four tables three tables would be returned to my target directory and this why i am trying to read write this is auto reset to one mapper again there is a story behind this because if you do not have a primary key on the table so scoop the scoop gets confused on which parameter it needs to split the boundaries and do the parallelism and write the data because scoop internally uses a map reduce paradigm hence it needs to do a parallel import okay so that's where we are instructing scoop if on any of the table primary key is not defined so you can take by default you can write all the data to one mapper okay that's what we are instructing okay so this the command is built 
let me copy this let me come over here let me hit this and let's executing this now what we'll do what this command will do this will try to connect to your respective database with that JDBC connection it will try to select the data from the first table it will apply a min max boundary queries it will try to split the data and then it will try to do a parallel import okay at the background at the background these are the things which will be getting affected so if you see the map reduced job is getting started okay so zero percent so the first one is completed and the second one has started so one by one step by step all the tables will be written to my HDFS file directory apart from that table which I have mentioned in the exclude table parameter okay let's let, let it finish and then we'll try to verify the data once we verify the data then we'll try to write a small script to automate this let's wait for this map I guess this is the third one and after this we should be able to navigate to the HDFS file system and see the data appropriately okay it has been completed let's go back over here if you see when I was executing the above command earlier I was not able to see anything but now if I'm trying to execute okay yes I can see one directory okay as I told you let me copy this or let me just type this command or directory name sorry and let me hit enter so inside this I would be having all the table names and they will be as a directory if you see this it's a directory and if I go within any of the table okay I will be seeing one part file and in that part file I will be having a data okay so this is I can see some data okay that is okay so the manual method is working fine and good okay so that's what the first method was like trying to do manually so that's what we have done now okay so this one is completed now let's try to write a small shell script and let's try to automate this okay same process we'll try to do we'll try to import but in spite of that what we'll try to do is we'll try to twist the scenario in the earlier case what we did is we excluded this table and we imported all this table okay now what we'll try to do is we'll try to exclude these tables okay and we'll try to import this table it's your call you can do anything okay let's do that okay so let me clear off the screen okay and if you just let's keep this as it and let's exclude tables I have something over here okay this is the MySQL database and this is where we'll try to construct a script okay now to construct a script let me I have already created some directories if I just do ls hyphen ltr if you see scripts let me go to that folder and let me do ls hyphen ltr okay as of now I do not see anything okay so let me start constructing a small script and let me try to do all the automation and everything in a single go okay let's do that so what I would do is let me take the notepad and let me start doing the second thing is like automated way and for that I'm trying to use a shell script okay let's see how can we use now what I am I would be doing is okay if you see the first thing okay now what is my scenario I need to exclude these three tables right okay so if you see here there is a device data I don't want to pass that manually I don't want to do manual things I want to do automated way so what I will be doing is I will create one file okay so the first let me take ABC so the first step is what I will be doing is I will be creating one file and in that file I will be mentioning those table names and with some parameter I am going to be passing that over here let's see okay so that is the first step so let me create a table that is nothing but let's any name you can give so I am trying to give let's say filter table dot txt okay so let me copy this name let's come over here and let's try to create this file okay let me go to the insert mode so which are the tables which I need to exclude I need to exclude t1 t2 t3 okay so let me write those table t1 
d2 d3 okay you can do the previous scenario also we can exclude the device data and import the other three tables it, it does not make a difference okay let's try to see the file let's just try to see the data okay so i can see three table names are there okay so the first thing is done let's come back to the notepad let's do the second thing what i i need to write abc what i need to do is i need to parameterize everything parameterize meaning is if you see i can see the username over here i can see the password over here i can see the directory is hard coded and this is hard coded the local host is okay but database name is again hard coded i don't need this because once we go once we push our code into a production environment what if the password changes after 30 days not this sorry what if the password changes so my code will fail right what if my directory gets changed i don't want to do that what if like let's say today i am excluding three tables what if tomorrow i want to exclude 10 tables at that moment of time you cannot run you cannot take the production code which is running you can stop that or take back as a cr and do the development and again redeploy into production so for that purpose config files comes into picture where you can maintain all your configurations or your whatever necessary things are there if you change this so it will be getting affected in your next run to your production code okay that's what i am trying to do over here so what I am trying to do, I am trying to create a file. Let's name that as, let's say, cred config. Okay, let me copy this. These are just naming convention which I am trying to take, but there are nothing fixed naming convention. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, let me go to the insert mode. What are the things I can automate, uh, parameterize is, so cool, let's start with username. <laughs> So the first thing is username. What is my username? Username is root. Let's enter. The second thing is nothing but password. Let me put my password into this file. That is nothing but welcome at the rate one two three. Okay. After that, uh, what I can database name also I can just parameterize right. So let's say database. Okay. What is my database name? Sev underscore db. And what is that? So this is okay so this i am thinking to pass okay i'll do that and uh, path yeah this path again i need to parameterize this path so let's say that is my output underscore path some name okay and what is that path user save profiles okay so slash you slash user save okay and uh, what was that how do file system and output as a output as a folder okay looks good to me and uh, this i would be passing as a parameter to this okay i'll handle that in a script i think i have tackled over there you can even parameterize your ip address but as of now i'm running on my local system but that looks good to me so these four things um let's see if if anything permits or uh, anything comes up we'll try to automate or try to write that over here ls hyphen ltr how many files i created i created two files let's give permissions so that if they are getting executed so we it should not show any permission issues okay so this is where my table will be there to filter this is my credential which is the cred config file which all my parameterization kept now let's try to write the actual script okay and uh, let's name that script as uh, what we can name is anything let's name something let come let me come to the notepad so the third thing is let's now we are writing the main script which is which is a small and we'll try to automate that okay okay so what we can name this let's name like this exclude tables.sh okay is it fine yeah looks good let's go over here and let's create a small script okay vi and the file name now if you see for everything i gave different different extension see by default in linux everything is a file system but why i'm trying to give this different extension is by looking at this i'll come to know okay these are my files these are my config files or the environment files and these are my scripts okay this is how the project uh, way of writing things goes okay so let's come over here and let me start writing a small script 
let's start step by step let me write first my shebang statement okay so that is nothing but bin and uh, bash okay so it it is always a uh, best best uh, or what you can say is like a, a good method as a developer to document your code okay whatever you are doing in the code always document that so that let's take an example after a few days you got a new job or let's say after a few months you got a new job and you moved out of this organization if the person is coming other person he or she should be able to understand the code and take it ahead so that's where the good practices of the organization comes into picture okay so i'll not go as of now into that to document that but let me just move ahead with just writing the script a small script okay okay so let's start now if you see i have already written this command and this command is working fine which is like a manual thing okay so let me just bring that over something over here okay we'll try to change all those things okay first of all now i need to parameterize all those things so in spite of that what i can do is let me just remove this i'm just trying to press ddd and the things are going okay so what we can do is we can just write the script over here and we can do copy paste also or parameterize anything is fine okay let's start now if you see there was one file which i have created and what was that file that was the config file okay so when i am trying to pass the parameter to these scoop command i need to have all the configs available before that okay so what i need to do is i need to call this config file into my script so that whatever parameters are available that parameters i can make use in my script okay so if you know linux so there is if you do any changes on your class path you either try to close your terminal and reopen the terminal or you try to write a command called source dot bash rc okay which means that all the environment variables will be available to the terminals or the forthcoming things whichever we are trying to process so the same concept i am trying to apply over you okay so what i am trying to do is i am trying to call that okay and let's okay so where where it is available mm, okay i'll need to open one more terminal because i'll will be navigating frequently to that scripts folder because we will be doing testing on the script also okay ls hyphen ltr now if you see this is the path so what is the path this is the path okay so let me copy this okay so you just need to say dot okay and and let me mention my entire path with my config file name okay done so with this what will happen is whatever parameters this config file has like root welcome one two three as a password database name and this path which i have assigned to a variable i can use in my script that is the thing which i am trying to do over here okay first step is done calling all my parameters and variables now if you see the second thing is if you see i have created one file which is nothing but a filter table and in that i have some tables which i need to filter and pass this as a parameter okay so what i would do is i will draw, write a small command okay and what is that command so let's document this tables not to be imported okay and let's say this is to uh bring all parameters to my script okay this is small thing okay now what i need to do is i need to because when i would be executing this command okay i need to under this filter table if you go to over here if i just say cat f and tab i have some three tables so i need to pass these three tables to this place as a parameter so that's what i am trying to do over here okay so what i am trying to do is i am trying to create a variable which which is nothing but a table and here i am just trying to write a small comma that is nothing but sed which is nothing but the stream editor okay so i'm just trying to print my first line okay and i'm just trying to take that file as an input okay oh, no let me copy the file name 
let me go over here and let me take this okay if you want to do this what you can do is you can copy this command and go over here execute this you are getting your table names okay so with that command what is happening is t1 t2 3 t2 t3 are coming into this parameter okay so that work is also done now what i need to do is if you see <coughs> this directory is already available if i execute this again it will fail so what i need to do if the directory is available i need to remove that okay so let's do that as well okay so let me write if the directory is available okay please remove it again it depends from project to project scenario because we do not want to lose the data okay but here i'm just trying to lose the data but again we can append the data and we can manipulate the data so okay now a simple command hdfs dfs hyphen rm hyphen r okay and the path is this okay but if you see i have already parameter i have already created a parameter for this path which is nothing but my output okay this is my variable and i have already brought everything over here so i can make use of my parameter or variable in my script how to do that simple you just need to open braces curly braces and okay i did not copy that okay so let me copy that variable let me come over here okay so let's go over here and let me just copy output path this is my parameter okay so let me come to my script and paste this over here so what will happen it will traverse to that path after traversing to that path what is the directory name this is the directory name okay so let me copy this and so done so what will happen dynamically if the directory is available first my directory would be removed and then my final execution will get executed done if that is done now my scoop command which i need to execute step by step okay so scoop command to import all tables with uh with excluding some table okay let me copy this okay so before copying this what i can do is i can just change the things over here itself okay so if you see let me go over here i have already parameter passed this save db to my database so let me copy this let me come over here what i can do is i can just change this over here so username is root again i have done some changes let me copy that username okay let me come over here and let me change that as well let's go to the password step by step let's do everything so that will not have any hassles let's do okay i just missed the dollar sign okay let me copy the password and if you come to the output again the same way which we did earlier okay so let me copy the output path and eradicate this and embed in a variable okay now device data so if you see in my script what i have done is i have written small command and that is getting passed to a parameter so let me call this parameter and pass this as a parameter over here which is nothing but the table okay now let me copy this let me paste this okay now if you see nothing is hard coded okay so file name etc etc looks good okay this is looks good now after this i need to do error handling okay let's do some small error handling again like it's not mandatory but uh, let's do that a small thing i am not writing a big code but a small small error handling what i am writing is i am writing a small condition okay if you remember earlier i showed you a small command echo dollar question mark so that's what i am trying to see okay echo dollar question mark if my above command is successful above command means this if this command is successful so what i need to do is hyphen equal sorry hyphen equal if the output is equal to 0 i need to do something what i need to do then so what i will try to do echo <coughs> sorry i'll try to do echo and let me print some command and what would be that uh, let's say 1 2 3 4 what it is 
let's let me put it from my keyboard over here okay so what i'm trying to see if my above command is successful i can just write a small statement that scoop import completed okay so let me one two three four five done okay let me come back one two three four five when i missed that okay and i need to write my else part else part which means again it will say that if my above command is not successful so what i need to do i need to echo what echo i need to say again means there are some failures or etc etc please investigate okay so let's say please investigate as of now that is not a meaningful but let me write something which will make so please investigate for the failure okay f a i l i u r e and that's it okay one two three four and the last one and i need to close my uh i need to, need to close my uh if condition so i'll just write fi hopefully looks good uh if everything is good so let me save this script colon wq save and quit ls hyphen ltr okay so let me provide a permission ideally what we do is we just provide the execute permission to the user but as of now this is my environment i'm just trying to do anything okay so ls hyphen ltr okay so three files got created the first file has the tables which needs to be filtered the second file which has some parameterization i think i should remove that extra line why because if you see it won't it won't make a trouble but uh, let's be clean on the code if you see there is a fifth line which is a blank okay so let me go to the vi create config file and let me just do dd done save and quit okay let's do ls hyphen ltr again cat filter the tables need to be excluded cat cred config okay the four parameters as of now i don't have much so i've just parameterized four things looks good and this is my script okay cool everything looks good if everything is good let's try to execute this script and let's see we are able to get the same output not same output but output would be the same only the tables would change earlier what happened we excluded the device table right we excluded the device table but now we are excluding t1 t2 three tables just small change here and there just to make a difference okay and if we see over here okay we can see some commands okay so what we can do is let me just see whether i can just see the time okay that's fine we can if you see this some time is there so i'm just trying to be sure okay i'm trying to means like these tables are getting created freshly so what i can do is i can just not sorry sorry i should have done ls i'm just trying to see the time so that i can show you the time as well okay so as of now see if you see it was written on 1926 so now hopefully the time should change when we execute the script okay so let's execute the script sh is the command and the script name is exclude if everything is well this script should work and if nothing is well means there are some issues or errors we'll try to debug the script and we'll try to see what are the issues let's execute enter these are some exceptions so let's forget about that because there are some settings which needs to be done on the virtual machine so i am okay cool so if you see map reduce job got started it means the script which we have written and the parameter is beautiful it has completed can you see this skipping t1 t2 t3 it has skipped three tables and if you see the message scope imported completed let's let's verify that let's go back over here let's do hdfs dfs ls okay if you see there is a change in the timing which means yes we we are able to see the data okay let's verify that okay so what was the exclude underscore p oops sorry sorry it was my mistake yeah let's come over here and let me just change this to ls hit enter can you see device data okay didn't we excluded this oh sorry sorry that's correct so we excluded t1 t2 t3 and the final output was device data right so we excluded this uh, tables and we just uh, imported this 
device data and uh, let me just see the data sdfs dfs iphone cat and see okay i can okay it's a directory so i cannot see the data so what i need to do is first i need to go to the bottom path and then i need to see the part file data yes we can see that hdfs dfs hyphen cat and uh, let's see only five rec first five records yes i can see first five records if you want to verify that what you can do is you can just write a small query select all from device underscore data and let's try to limit only five records hopefully if we try to verify again you can verify the things it should be the same okay so that's it so this was a small scenario wherein we just written a script first we did a manual thing then what we did is we have automated through a small shell script and that's what i wanted to show actually how to write a script and how to automate the things even if i try to execute this again again it will work perfectly and fine if you want to test that let's do that now in a debugging mode how to see the debugging mode sh hyphen x okay exclude let me execute this again before executing this let's see the timing for that file okay so which was this 1926 or oh sorry 45 something it was 49 it was okay let's execute the script again now but i'm trying to execute this in a debugging mode so whenever we get issues we try to debug in verbose mode and the debugging mode so as of now i'm just showing in the debugging mode i'm not going into verbose mode because there will be so many logs would be coming up okay let me hit enter i'll just let it let it get completed then i'll try to show you how the parameters we see and we identify are mistakes or issues because of which it is failing okay let it get completed first then i'll try to show you what are the parameters how they get written in the debugging mode if you see scope import got completed okay that's fine cool let me show you the debugging mode let's go a little up a little up so these are the exceptions i'm not worried about those things yeah i started my script in a debug mode over if you see this is the file okay under this i had these parameters it gives you everything if there is null coming over here oh i can identify something is issuing that so i can debug the, uh, i can go that and i can see that file is there any null value or etc so that's how we debug in real environment okay so if you see all the parameters of my config file is coming if you just verify so if there are any issues this is how we try to see okay so yeah come back if you see said i have an np this was the command and we got this output and that was passed to this table as a parameter then this got executed successfully and if you see this was the parameter which was taken from this as a parameter and passed over you okay so this scoop input started okay and if you see my database name got replaced if you see my username got replaced if you see my password got replaced directory got replaced and the tables which were there they were passed automatically over here and then finally step by step step by step everything happened and finally it got completed and this was the echo command if you see zero is equal to zero this was the echo command was written and finally my output was written this is how your script got executed okay so i'm stopping the recording